Hey there. We've been getting into iron sharpens iron. But you know what I noticed? What's that? Tonight might be the night where we tell you how to become that iron. See, it's not enough to just know that the Lord uses us with each other to make each other sharper. Yeah. How about we intently, that is, with extreme uh, desire and deliberation, in other words, be this deliberately, be iron to someone else. Yes. What if you could specify how God used you as iron in someone else's life to sharpen them up? I like what you said, but not only us being used to sharpen somebody else, but that we're mature enough to be open and teachable Yeah. that we would allow God to use someone else to sharpen us. Mm -hmm. So here it is on Marriage Monday. Mm -hmm. We have been discussing with the husbands and wives this same scripture, Proverbs chapter 27, verse 17. Amen. Iron sharpens iron, and so does a countenance of a friend. And so we've been discussing with them how, as husband and wives, we can sharpen each other. That's right. And so then on yesterday, we, we dealt with the um, iron sharpens iron, sharpen iron mm -hmm. and so does a countenance of a friend. That's like a tongue twister, right? right? Proverbs chapter 27, verse 17. And we dealt with that with the satisfied singles. And we talked about being able to be the person who does what? Who mm. speaks the truth in, in love. love. Amen. We also talked about the person being able to drink spiritual milk, and we shared First Peter chapter two verses one through three. Uh -huh. Well, this evening for Bible study, we still want to talk about iron sharpens iron, chapter twenty-seven of Proverbs, verse seventeen, and that it is what the Old Testament, yes. right? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And so we, tonight we want to share with being the person who matures in faith. Amen. Well, what does that mean? It means that you can't give what you don't have. Mm. If you're going to be a person who matures in faith, you can't sharpen unless you are being sharpened yourself. We have to learn to be open and teachable and to be fluent in the word of God. Amen, Amen Pastor? Pastor? So that when a less mature Christian needs wisdom, it will be right on the tip of the tongue. Why? Because I have taken the word of God. You have taken the word of God. We have taken the word yeah. of God and that we've hidden in our heart that we may not sin against. against. But That's when right. we need it, we can bring it back up to share with somebody, right? Amen. If it's a word of wisdom, if it's a word to correct, amen, yes. if it's amen. a word to encourage, amen, that what happens is that the word of God is going to be at the very tip of your tongue. Amen. Absolutely. That we're going to do what? That we're going to be in communion with God, yes. both talking and listening. Amen. But not only are we going to talk and listen the word of God, we're going to obey the word of God. We're going to take the word of God and we're going to apply it mm -hmm. to our situation. That's Amen. So Amen. that when someone needs to know what God is saying, Saying through his word, amen, mm -hmm. or if it's a prophetic word, that we will be able to do what? To guide that person to hear from God themselves, amen. amen. See, Paul told Timothy to be an example for the believers. Mm -hmm. So I'm just repeating what Paul said to all of us. We need to be an example for the believers, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Likewise, be an example, not just for the people in your household, but outside of your household, right. in your community, in your careers, yes. on your job, standing at the bus stop, when you're sharing an Uber ride, amen? amen. Then we're going to do what? The next thing we want to do is we want to be the person who practices spiritual discipline. Oh, yes. What are you talking about, Pastor Shelley? I'm so glad you asked. Ask me that question in live chat. No, now. I'm just kidding. Yeah. So here it is. One way to be sharp yourself is to engage in the practices that help you grow. Mm. Spiritual disciplines are often spoken about 
among the church yet they are key components in your maturity amen mm -hmm. i want and, and i didn't say that correctly spiritual disciplines aren't often spoken about among the church mm -hmm. yet they are key components in your maturity Amen. they're key components in my maturity if we're going to really grow up and be more christ-like reading the word and praying are great disciplines for getting alone with god and hearing from him doing fasting periodically and, and relying on god for your spiritual nourishment right. will bring and allow you to depend on god to rely on him in new ways that you never even imagined amen yeah. memorizing scripture will help you keep the word hidden in your heart on, for now. when temptation arises hallelujah yes. then you will be able to remind yourself of the word quickly on, we now. need to practice spiritual disciplines and rely on god to live well in this ungodly world amen, amen. i'm gonna say that in case you didn't catch it we need all of us to Come practice yeah. spiritual disciplines and rely on God to live well my, my. in this ungodly world. Oh, amen. amen. I like that. Now, amen. we also need to be the person who is above reproach. Mm. When you look at the New Testament of 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 12, it reads, Here is a trustworthy saying. Whoever aspires to be an overseer, overseer desires right. a noble task. Mm -hmm. Now, the overseer is to be above reproach, reproach. That's right. faithful to his wife, mm -hmm. temperate, self-controlled, mm -hmm. respectable, mm -hmm. hospitable, uh -huh. able to teach, hmm. not given to drunkenness. Okay. Not violent, yes. but gentle. That's right. Not quarrelsome. Mm -hmm. Not a lover of, of money. money. Yes, yes. See, you don't have to have a leadership position in your church to be a leader mm -hmm. in the lives of people. My, my. But to lead, you must be above reproach. Mm. See, no one is perfect, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't strive for God's standards. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. After all... Jesus Christ not just gave, but he left us the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. to empower us to walk the difficult walk of faithfulness, yeah. the challenges that we face from day to day, mm -hmm. the trials and, and the valleys and the tribulations that we go through. Mm -hmm. See, you and I have to be the person whose life will be without blemish mm -hmm. before the Lord. See, don't give yourself over to lustful pleasures. Mm -hmm. Be abundant in the fruits of the Spirit. Hallelujah. But God before the temporary things in life, Hallelujah. and you will, hallelujah, be ready Hallelujah, to be the person mm -hmm. to sharpen others. My, my, my. And don't you want to be a person that yes. sharpens others? Yes, not I Not with do. the sharp-witted tongue. I'm Ooh, not talking that. about that Thank one. You. No, Thank no, you. no. I'm Thank saying you. sharpen others as in bring out the beneficial effects yes. of your person Thank you, Lord. towards that other person. In other words, when you're friction against them, when you're having a conversation with them, yeah. when you're aspiring correction in them, when Come you're aspiring on. to give them an encouraging word, let that thing infiltrate your system, so the love of God, infiltrate your system so that you can respond to another and be a sharpening agent yes. like none other. See, you were born for this very express Thank purpose. You, Lord. To be a blessing to God and to be a blessing to God's children. That's right. To be a blessing to God and to be a blessing to God's children. Yes. And you can't be a blessing to neither one of them, God nor his children, if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. Not the kind of blessing that's going to sharpen with the right edges. Mm. See, sometimes scissors or things that are blunt force objects need to be a certain level of sharp to perform their task. That's right. If I have to cut through some muck and mire or cut through a heavy duty piece of paper or cut through a particular rug or cut through something that's tough, I need to be of a certain sharpness, don't I? And so, amen. So I'm asking you not to be a butter knife in a, in a sharp knife drawer. 
My, my, my. I'm asking you not to be a dull sharpener in a, in a, in a, in a strong sharpened position. That means if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you are a blunt object. You aren't really sharpening what you should be sharpening. But that is if you accept the Lord Jesus Christ and you allow him to purge you yes. with hyssop and mm -hmm. cleanse you from the inside out, then when you start to sharpen someone, they actually become the sharpest object because you're driven by the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. and not your mind. Amen? Amen. So accept the Lord Jesus Christ today. Say, Lord, come into my life and save me. Hallelujah. And I want to be new. Like the preacher said, and I want you to make me a sharpening agent like none other. Save me and fill me full of your spirit. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And I believe in my heart that along with your name being written in the Lamb's Book of Life, Hallelujah. you're also written in a sharpening agent, written in as a sharpening agent. To other human beings yes. so go be the sharpening agent that you were called to be go sharpen another piece of iron in jesus name we'll see you soon and always remember that ilm loves, loves you. you but more importantly god, god loves, loves you. you peace blessings we'll see you soon